Hey everyone, and welcome to a deep dive. And this one is actually tailor made for one of our listeners, you. You want to know more about Ashlyn Kruger. That's right. This rising star in American tennis. And look, anyone can rattle off like the stats and rankings. Right. But we want to uncover like those aha moments. You know what I mean? <laughs> the stuff that makes you appreciate her journey, not just, you know, her results. Yeah. Now, I know you're already following Kruger's career, but did you catch that Cincinnati Open match where she took down Naomi Osaka? What? A twice a Grand Slam <laughs> champ, and Kruger just like handled it. Yeah. It was a sign of things to come, and we're going to break down exactly why. So Kruger's only 20 years old, right? but her rise has been uh, fascinating to watch. Definitely. So let's rewind to the beginning. Her early days in tennis, her breakthrough wins, and what those moments tell us about her future. What do you say we get this deep dive started? I'm ready when you are. Perfect. Now, anyone who follows junior tennis knows Kruger made a splash way back in 2020 by winning the Orange Bowl. Right. Not just winning it, entering as a wild card and then like dominating. Yeah, that's a detail people often overlook. Wild cards in tennis are like these like golden tickets, right? They're given to young players who might not have the ranking to enter a tournament like directly. So even back then, there was a buzz about Kruger, a sense that she could be special. It's almost like the tennis world was saying, OK, kid, show us what you got. Right. And she did. But going from dominating the juniors to turning pro, that's a whole different beast. Absolutely. It's like graduating from college to the real world. Steep learning curve. But those early experiences, even the tough losses, are crucial. Kruger's 2021 season with debuts at big tournaments like Indian Wells and the U.S. Open really highlights that. And she got wild cards into both of those events, too. So yeah. even as she's starting out, there's this belief in her potential from the top. Exactly. And while those debuts might not have all been victories, the experience of playing against top ranked opponents on those massive stages is invaluable. OK, so let's talk about those early losses for a second. Mm. You're saying they actually helped her grow. Absolutely. Think of it like this. Every loss is a chance to analyze what went wrong, to identify weaknesses and come back stronger. Those early matches against established players forced Kruger to raise her game, to develop the mental toughness that's just as important as physical strength. And it's something we saw pay off in a big way in 2023. You're talking about that incredible moment at the Roswell Open, right? Mm -hmm. Beating former world number one, Victoria Azarenka, to reach her first ever WTA quarterfinal. Amazing. That was huge. It was a statement win, no doubt. And what makes it even more impressive is that Kruger had lost to Azarenka the previous year at the U.S. Open. Oh, wow. To come back, adjust her game, and beat a former world champion, it speaks volumes about her mental resilience. Seriously. It's one thing to beat a top player once, but to do it after a loss shows real grit and determination. It's like she took that loss, dissected it, and came back with a vengeance. Talk about turning a setback into a springboard. And that mental fortitude, that ability to learn from losses and perform under pressure, is a hallmark of a champion. It's something we've seen repeatedly in Kruger's career, and it's a big reason why many believe she has what it takes to reach the very top. And her results definitely back that up. In 2023, she grabs her first WTA title at the Veneto Open, a 125 event. For those who aren't familiar, these are part of the WTA tour, but a step below the biggest tournaments. Still a big deal for an up-and-coming player. Absolutely. And winning a title, even at that level, can do wonders for a player's confidence. It's often a turning point where they start to believe, truly believe, they can compete with the best. And it seems like winning that first one really ignited something in Kruger, because she followed that up by winning the WTA 250 Japan Women's Open. And get this, without dropping a single set, that shows incredible dominance. It wasn't just about winning. It was about making a statement, beating opponent after opponent, dictating the play, refusing to let anyone take a set off her. That sends a message to the rest of the tour. I'm not just here to compete. I'm here to win. Mm -mm. So we've got this incredible run in 2023. But how does it translate into the rankings? Well, those wins catapulted her into the top 100 for the first time, a significant milestone for any player. But it's not just about breaking into that elite group. It's about how you perform once you're there. And Kruger, she didn't just break in. She kept climbing, reaching a career high ranking of 51 in 2024. Reaching the top 100. I mean, that is a huge accomplishment it's huge. in any sport. Absolutely. It really is. And, you know, it's inspiring, even for those of us who aren't like professional athletes. Yeah. That drive to push yourself, to overcome setbacks, to chase your dreams. Kruger's story resonates with anyone striving for success in a competitive field. 
because it's not always going to be easy, right? There will be bumps in the road. Always are. Yeah, exactly. And speaking of responding to challenges, 2024 has been another massive year for Kruger. It has. She's really solidified her place in like the upper echelon of women's tennis. I mean, reaching the third round of a Grand Slam for the first time at the U.S. Open, yeah. that's a whole other level of pressure and competition. Completely, no doubt about it. The Grand Slams, they are the pinnacle of tennis. The best players in the world, the history, the crowds, it's a different beast altogether. And to navigate your way to the latter stages, that takes a special kind of resilience. For sure. And she didn't just reach the third round. She took down Mira Andreva along the way. Right. Another rising star who was ranked 21st at the time. Wow. Kruger seems to thrive in those high-pressure moments. She does. What is it about those big matches, those big stages, that brings out her best game? Well, I think it goes back to her mentality. She's not afraid of the big moments. She embraces them. Remember that win over Azarenka? That wasn't just about shot making. It was about having the guts to go for it when it mattered most. And against Andreva, a player many consider a future Grand Slam champion herself, Kruger didn't back down. She rose to the occasion. She did. And that U.S. Open run, it wasn't just about, like, prestige or bragging rights. Reaching the later rounds of a Grand Slam, it comes with more ranking points, greater recognition, and tougher opponents. Oh. All of which can, like, fast-track a player's career. Absolutely. You're right. Those deep runs in Grand Slams are often what separate the, like, good players from the great ones yeah their career defining moments and kruger proves she's more than ready to compete at that level and let's not forget about her doubles game partnering with fellow american sloan stevens she won the doubles title at the charleston open this year it seems like she can do it all what does winning a doubles title tell us about her game that maybe we don't see in singles that's a great point doubles requires a different skill set more emphasis on net play, communication, and strategy. It's almost like a different sport. And Kruger's success there speaks volumes about her versatility and adaptability. So it's not just about power and athleticism. Right. It's about being a student of the game, understanding the nuances, and adapting to different situations. Exactly. It's about having a well-rounded game, both physically and mentally. And that adaptability will serve her well in singles, too, especially as she faces more and more diverse opponents. We're talking about a player who can win from the baseline, who's not afraid to attack the net, and who understands how to construct points strategically. That's a dangerous combination in anyone's book. It really is. So we've talked about Kruger's like meteoric rise, her impressive wins, and those pivotal moments that have shaped her career. But there's so much more to uncover, especially when we consider her playing style and what it reveals about her potential in the like ever-evolving world of women's tennis, which, lucky for us, is exactly what we're going to dig into next. Okay, so... We've covered like a lot of ground here, the early promise, those breakout wins, even how Kruger handles pressure. But what I'm really curious about is like her playing style. How would you describe it to someone who like hasn't seen her play yet? What are those like on-court tendencies that give us clues about her potential? Well, one of the first things you'll notice about Kruger is her power. Yeah. She's got a really strong serve and her ground strokes both forehand and backhand pack a punch. Yeah. She's not afraid to take the ball early, dictate the pace and really go for her shots. So she's not just reacting to what her opponent is doing. She's imposing her will on the match. It's like she's saying, this is my court and we're playing by my rules. Exactly. She's got that aggressive mindset, that desire to take control from the first point. But what's even more intriguing is that she combines that power with a surprising amount of adaptability. We've seen her adjust her strategy effectively against different opponents, whether it's playing more patiently against a big hitter or using her angles and drop shots to disrupt a player who likes to hug the baseline. Now, that's interesting because you might think someone with like such a powerful game would just try to overpower everyone, you know what I mean? But it sounds like Kruger's got more tools in her arsenal than just brute force. Absolutely. And that's what makes her so dangerous. Take that win over Azarenka, for example. We saw her incorporate drop shots into her game plan much more than she had in the past, specifically to exploit Azarenka's tendency to stay back behind the baseline. That ability to recognize her opponent's weaknesses and adjust her game plan accordingly is huge. It's like she's a chess player out there, always thinking a few moves ahead. And in a sport as, like, dynamic and unpredictable as tennis, that kind of adaptability is crucial for, like, long-term success, wouldn't you say? 100%. The women's game is incredibly diverse right now, with a mix of playing styles, from aggressive baseliners to crafty counterpunchers. 
To be at the top of the game, you can't just be good at one thing. You have to be able to handle anything that's thrown at you. And Kruger seems to have that rare combination of power, athleticism, and tennis IQ that suggests she can do just that. So as we kind of wrap up this deep dive into the world of Ashlyn 